pleasant good morning to your brothers and sisters. We are going to ask those who are going. We hope you will have a good day. And those who are staying, we are asking that you kindly settle down. We are about to begin service. We are going to invite the Obistan family to sit over this side. All the Obistan family sit over this side. And sit up a little bit closer, man. You have a special guest today, the persons from Food for the Poor. You will sit on this side. Persons from Food for the Poor, you will sit on this side up front. And the rest of the congregation, we invite you to come a little bit closer. Hmm? Brother Lawrence, you can't sit around the back today, you know. You have to be up front. And the Heinz family will have to be up front today. Brother Neil, Deacon Neil, come a little bit closer. The fan is up, up top. One of these days, we are going to hear condition the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wow. You know what? I must start a fund, the air conditioned fund. And the overcomers department will lead the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Quinlan, who is up there, there's a little song that just come. When it starts, serves a little bit different. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who he let his life an atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may come in. We ask that you be seated as we sing that. And prepare our hearts this morning for worship.
gracious God and Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Lord, for life, and that you come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. As we come to worship you today, we ask that you will forgive us of our sins, forgive us of our carnality, forgive us, Lord, where we have failed you, and we ask that you will wash us and cleanse us and purge us from all unrighteousness. We pray that today's worship service will not just be an ordinary service, not just one mighty God of the same, but one that you will be present in a very powerful way, touching and changing lives. And Lord, when we should have left this place, your Holy Spirit will rest upon us in a mighty way. We give you every person that will participate in this service today, the children from Obistan, the representatives from Food for the Poor, Lord, those who have babies to be dedicated, Lord, the speaker, we bring everyone to you, and we ask, mighty God, that you will superintend and let your will and purpose be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as the praise team come to lead us into a time of worship and thanksgiving. Can we just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? We're not here by our own doing, but it is the doing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. 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 Put your hands together.
this morning we sing hallelujah. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
glorious is our God. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe that our God is holy this morning? Hallelujah. We cry, Hosanna, in the highest. Hallelujah.
worship. I live to worship. Come on, sing that with me. To worship you, I live. To worship. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. And if you have no words, here's what you say. Oh. this time we want to pray this morning for those persons who have a need that you want the Lord to meet we still believe that God hears and he answers prayer is there anyone here this morning who have a need that you want the Lord to meet just raise your hand praise God praise God is there anyone here this morning who knows somebody who needs a touch from the Lord? Raise your hand. Praise God. We are going into prayer. We're going to ask persons not to be walking around at this time. We are going to talk to the Lord. We are going to be petition, petitioning the throne of grace. And to pray for us this morning is... Deacon Shelley, as you come this morning, I'm going to give you permission to sit this morning as we bow our heads in reverence to Almighty God. Brother Shelley, praise God. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Lord, this morning we come before you because we know of no other God but you. All other gods are idol, but you alone are King of kings, and Lord of Lords. And so this morning we come and we just want to big you up, Lord. 
we just want to praise you because we know that you are Lord. We know that you love us with an everlasting love. We know, Lord, that you have done much for us. And you continue to, Lord, have mercy upon us. We think of what happened this week with that 4.9, some say 5, earthquake that hit our city. It could have been a different outcome, but Lord, we want to thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, that you spared us and you continue to spare this nation, this island, Jamaica. We want to thank you, Lord, for all the other blessings that you have given to us. Lord God, thank you, Lord, for the rains that have been coming. Lord, we have been, Lord, experiencing a drought. But Lord God, you have had mercy upon us and given us rain. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you have been good to us. So this morning, before we even petition you, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you have done much for us. Just give him thanks for something that he has done for you this past week. Give him praise. Give him praise because he is worthy of all praise, all honor, and all glory. And so, Lord, we want to thank you that we can gather together Lord, in this fashion, Lord, some years ago we had to be, Lord, at our various homes, watching on television, watching on our smart devices, because we could not gather because of, Lord, COVID. But God, we want to thank you that we can come together this morning and we can give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing this for us. And so this morning, we come, Lord, Lord, with our petitions. You know what they are. Some of them are too personal. But, Lord, we want to thank you that you are a God who knows everything. You know our very thoughts. And so, God, we bring these needs, these, Lord, desires into, our, into your presence. And we ask you, Lord, that, Lord, you will answer. We declare, Lord, that whatever it is that we need, that you will provide, whether it is jobs, whether it is, Lord, for education, whether, Lord, it is for, Lord, a husband or a wife, Lord, for a job, whatever it is, Lord, we just bring it before you. Lord, there are persons who need healing. And, oh, God, we just declare your healing over your people this morning. We declare that by your stripes we are healed. We declare, Lord, that, Lord, sickness must go in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We declare wellness and wholeness amongst your people this morning in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks for healing, Lord. Whatever it is, if it's cancer, it must go. If it's high blood pressure, it must go. If it's diabetes, it must go. If it is some other ailment, it must go in the name and authority of Jesus of Nazareth. We declare hope. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for all who will participate in this Lord service. We pray especially for Obistan. Lord, our outreach, our education, our outreach. We pray for its leadership. We pray for all the children who attend. We are pray for all the teachers, all the administrators, the ancillary staff. We pray, oh God, for them. And we pray that you will bless them even this morning. And so, Lord, as we go, we pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you will anoint the one who will bring the word. We pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you will be with our brother Crookshank this morning. And we thank you for what you are going to do and, Lord, what you are going to say through him. Lord, minister through the choir, through the, Lord, the ministry of every person who, Lord, steps on this podium. And, Lord, we pray that everyone 
who hears your word, especially those who do not know you, will respond to your word, that they will come to know you this morning as Lord and Savior. And so we give you thanks. And all God's people say, let's just give the Lord a great big praise this morning. Let's give him thanks. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Blessings and honor be to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Have a great and godly week. Good morning, everyone. I say that again. Good morning, everyone. And how are you doing? Wonderful. Can you all do something for me? Can you all just give me a smile? Smile a while. Give your face a rest. Eh? Smile a while. Smile. I know some people still not give me a smile. Oh, we look so, some of we look so sad this morning. You know, we're going to thank God for life. We are alive. We're, in spite of all the challenges, we are alive. We are well. There is hope. Amen. Amen. Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Kingston Open Bible Church here at 12 Washington Boulevard. Those on the internet, wherever you are viewing us from, welcome, welcome. A open Bible, a Jamaica warm welcome. Now, first time visitors. Can our first time visitors just stand and give us a wave and a little smile with the wave? First time visitors, give them a round of applause. First time you're coming to this church. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Great, great to have you here with us this morning. Is there anybody celebrating a birthday? The past week or today is your birthday. Can you just lift your hands? Anybody like this? Rainy month of October. Wonderful, my brother. Happy birthday to you. I see two lovely ladies over there. Happy birthday to you. And the school is celebrating its birthday as well. So happy birthday, Obistan. Come on. A wonderful round of applause. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And those who born on February and, and September, if you can give them a little gift, that would be nice. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Wedding anniversary. Anybody got married in September, the rainy month? September, rainfall, and you thought that the wedding was going to wash out? At the back? Stand up and wave for us, man. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. And we wish you many, many, many more to come. But guess what? This morning's service is a special. We have some special persons here with us. Two special institutions this morning. One that caters for education and one that caters for the poor. What a combination. Eh? So, we are going to ask Mrs. Michelle Duncan Walker to please stand and wave to from Food for the Poor. And the team, is the team here? Yes. Yes, and our own is with us. How are you doing, Sister Sadie? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Welcome to Church of the Open Bible, 12 Washington Boulevard. Welcome, and we hope to see you again. Sadie, invite them to church um, next week. All right? Wonderful. Sadie is one of our young people here at church. Very active, very um, involved. All right? All right, now, so we move over to Obistan because today is their birthday, and we want to welcome the chairman, Brother Lawrence, can you just stand for us, please, and just give us a wave, man. The chairman, yes, 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 yes. And we now have also the newly installed principal, our very own, Sister Patricia Hines. Wave for us, Sister Hines. Wonderful, 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 excellent. Oh, all right. And it wouldn't be possible without the teachers. Can the teachers just stand and just give us 
a, a, a wave offering as well. The teachers, the teachers. The teachers. Staff, and the staff, and other staff members. Just stand and give us a, 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 a wave. Teachers and staff. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes. And the parents. Come on, stand up, man, and give us a round. Give them a round of applause. Parents, parents. Oh, I myself am a parent, so I have to stand and give a, a wave offering as well. I am a parent as well. I am a parent as well. All right, wonderful. And there wouldn't be no school if the children weren't there. So the children, can you please stand, those who are here? Can you stand and wave? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Excellento. And I close with this. If you are at the school and you're feeling a little bit sick and a little boy come over and lay his hand and say, Jesus, Father, Amen. That is my son, Malachi. My son Malachi is in Kinder One. Whenever we are at home and anybody feels sick, Malachi comes over. Lays on, Jesus, Father, Amen. And there are times when we are traveling, and there are certain places in reach, and mommy and daddy have to shout, and we have to shout, Jesus. So Malachi, my son, is also attending the institution. So my name is Minister Orlando Waite, and I'm the youth pastor here at the church. All right. With that said, we now have an item by our teachers, from the school, are they ready? After which, we will receive greetings from Mrs. Michelle Duncan Walker, who is the distribution service manager there at Food for the Poor. So we go in that order.
Reverend Franklin King, ministers, officers, and other persons on the platform, members of the congregation, fellow colleagues from Food for the Poor, visitors, friends all, a blessed good morning. It is such a blessing to be here with you today as we celebrate 40 years of service to the less fortunate. As part of our 40th anniversary celebrations, we are visiting 40 churches island-wide. Kingston Open Bible Church is our 20th location. So far, we are halfway and with another 20 visits to go. As we speak, another group is fellowshiping with the, fellowshiping with the believers at Blessed Sacrament Cathedral in Montego Bay, and just yesterday, we were at the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Like the church family here at Kingston Open Bible Church, we recognize that placing God at the center of our ministry is of utmost, to, to our, sorry, utmost importance. God inspired our founder, Ferdinand Mufud, to establish Food for the Poor in 1982 and God continues to be faithful four decades later. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, verse 40. These words have rever reverberated through Food for the Poor for 40 years, and these are the very words upon which FFP Jamaica was established. I am proud to say that today, this is a scripture that continues to guide our ministry, and I'm truly honored and humbled to be part of this legacy. Over the years, we have evolved as a charity. 
with a stronger emphasis on income generation and sustainability for the less fortunate. The socioeconomic challenges are pervasive. The needs of our people have intensified. Our response will continue to be marked by transformation as we seek to create opportunities that allow our brothers and sisters to thrive. As we commemorate this, our 40th anniversary, we pause to honor our founder and our past and current board, board directors for their obedience, leadership, and service. We thank our generous donors and partners, such as the outreach team here at Kingston Open Bible Church, for your gifts, your time, your prayers, and assisting with delivering items to the needy. To our employees, past and present, you have always been our true assets. Your hard work, professionalism, and compassion have positioned us as strong contenders for the charity of choice in Jamaica. Thanks, to, thanks also to all our recipients for the warm smiles, tears of joy, and expressions of gratitude that constantly remind us why we do what we do. We are intentionally striving for energetically moving for, towards an even more impactful future. We're lifting people out of poverty through sustainable income generating projects is a focus and the norm. Brothers and sisters, alone we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Let's build back the love for Jamaica, one family and one community at a time. Let's play our part in rekindling the hope in Jamaica, land we love. Let's be reminded that whatever we do, we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do for the Lord. And at this point, I'd just like to mention that I've been at Food for the Poor for the past 31 years. And, and it has been truly a blessing. When I wake up in the mornings to come to work, I don't go to a job, I go to a ministry. And just by giving to God's people, we are blessed. So on behalf of our board directors, executive leadership team, and our staff, Thanks for hosting us this morning, and please keep us and our donors in your prayers. May the abundant gifts and blessings of God sustain you all. Thank you. Come on, give it up, another round of applause. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All of us, I believe, would have known somebody, where, whether on TV or personally, who have benefited from food for the poor. Amen? Wonderful. Let us continue to pray for them as they help those who are less fortunate in our society. Now, we go to the scripture reading. And this will be done by Ariana Jones and our own, one of our own young people, Aiden Quinlan. After which, and they will be reading Acts 18, 18 to 28. And then the announcement. Okay. All right, so we will now have the scripture. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading will be taken from Acts 18, verse 18 to 24. We will be reading from the NIV. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Sencria because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, 
he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and, and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phyria, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. Here ends a portion of God's holy word, and we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. We commend our young people. They have read the scripture so well. Miss Walker, man, they don't believe you know your age, you know. Because I can't believe that you could be working at Food for the Poor for 31 years. You just look like 31. Yeah, you are doing very well. But brethren, Food for the Poor is an organization that I have spent at least 34 years with, Miss Walker. When I was in Linstead, we were, I was a distribution center, the Charlemont Open Bible Church. Yes, I was a person who were there. I used to get sometimes a whole trailer load of food for to distribute in that area. I have written several letters for houses and some persons get house. Brethren, some persons get projects. Bees, you have, um, you do plants. Persons get different um, furnitures, bed, television, sewing machine, the list goes on. It seems like when they go out, anything that they find, they bring it in. But it's a wonderful organization that we must pray for and support. They are doing a tremendous job right across Jamaica and across all denominations. They don't look out for Catholic or Anglican. They support everybody. And you must continue the work. I'm here for Mr. Stan Days. Yes. The first time I went to Food for the Poor, it was only Mr. Stan at Wesinko at the warehouse. So I, uh, and I've gone from Wesinko down to downtown, then they moved to on the seafront then back to where Singo to the present side. So I can tell you, I'm an ambassador for Food for the Poor. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm so happy to have you with us this morning and to have among the ranks our own sister, Sadie. And Sadie, know that she's special to me. I always say I'm happy that she has gone to work for Food for the Poor. God bless you. We're really happy to have you and we wish you Food for the Poor God's richest blessings as you continue to serve the poor. If you read Mr. Mafu's book of how food for the poor start, it is a blessing to know that God could have moved on someone's heart in such a way to start this wonderful organization. May God continue to bless you. Obistan, you're our home. And we are so happy to have you in service this morning. I'm going to make the principal uncomfortable. Madam Principal, we want you to come a little bit closer that we can see you. Amen? She needs to sit in the front. She lead in the team. Amen? And I really want you to put your hands together for our Sister Patricia Hines. I know she wants to sit beside Brother Hines and the family now. But she's a wonderful person, somebody who loves the school, who have the school at heart, and have worked tireless. Sometimes I said to her, you're not taking some leave, you need to take a break. She's here right through the holidays. And praise God, she have accepted the call to lead the school. 
I believe she's a fine candidate, and I believe that God's hand is upon her. Our heartiest congratulations to you, Madam Principal. Praise God. The board chairman have taken off a lot of work off me, and I'm very happy for that. Wonder we are the same size. I've shifted some of the work on him. Praise God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are going to be taking the offering at this time. And as I always say, we do not throw offering at this church, you know. So if you are going to throw your offering, you are in the wrong church. What we do, we present our offering to Almighty God. So we're going to ask that you take out your tithes and your offering and hold them in your hand as we worship the Lord with our giving this morning. Um, I want to encourage you to give because that's the way that God says it will be given back to us. Why food for the poor survive 40 years is because of donation and gifts from people. So take out your tithes and your offering. We also want to remind you that the integrated stewardship those of you who have made pledge to give, it is still alive. And we ask that you honor those pledge. If you notice, we are working quite nicely on the multipurpose building over across the front. Some part of it goes to Obiston, and some part of it goes to the outreach down there in Old Arbor. Please hold your tithes and your offering. Father, we thank you this morning for the gifts of your people. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us in so many different ways that we could bring back something to your house today. Lord, as we present our offering to you, we ask that you will accept it, Lord, and use for the furtherance of your work here on earth. We pray, mighty God, that you will bless your people, enlarge their territory, and extend their borders, and may your hands rest mighty upon them. Bless and sanctify the gifts of your people and return to them in many fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Aunt Rose Campbell will be coming with the announcement. While she's coming, I just want to inform you, brethren, that the Reverend Hewitt McDonald, pastor of the Greater Portmore Church, that came out of this church, have lost his mother. She went to be with the Lord yesterday. Let us remember Reverend McDonald and family in our prayers. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. All right, let me, let me tell you about a few upcoming events. Um, Sunday school, that's every day, every Sunday. We meet at 9.15 every Sunday. Uh, we meet face-to-face -face or online. If you're going to join us online, the ID is, the Zoom ID is H to eight. One four seven two six nine five four, and the passcode is class. Now, our young people they meet every Friday at seven p.m. in person or via Zoom, and the Zoom ID is seven four nine one eight four four nine seven four, and the passcode is overcomers. The Sunday school ID is eight two eight one four. 726-954, and the passcode is CLASS. Now, the Eastern Region Sports Day of the Youth Department will be held here this Saturday, September 30, starting at 9 a.m., and the color, our color is red. Prayer meeting and Bible study. Prayer meeting and Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., and this week, Minister Leon Davis will continue his presentation. And coming in October, the Counseling Ministry will present a series on the theme, No Child Left Behind, Every Child Matters. And the scripture for focus is St. Matthew 18, verses 5 and 6. We ask that you join us for all-night prayer meeting this Friday from 10 p.m. to 6 Saturday morning. And the theme is Matters of the Heart. And the theme, the theme scripture is Matthew 12, 24 to 40. You, can, you may join us via Zoom, and that is 
Obisna and Kinna Prep, yes, they're here. Thank you for joining us. We're happy that you are with us. Now, the Friendship Minister will be having a meeting on Saturday, October 8, 2023, at 5.30 p.m. in Henderson Hall, and you're invited to attend if you're interested in serving in that ministry. Father Richard, Richard Holdong, Holong's production, Ruby, is on next week and you can get tickets at the church's office for $1,800. And the Covenant Moravian Church, 127 Malines Road, will be having their annual community health fair this Saturday, September 30, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the services that they will provide, blood sugar testing, hypertension, and they will have other medical examinations. We ask that you remember the care box, which is under the belfry. I'm sorry, all night prayer meeting went, right. Okay, thank you. The care box, remember to, you can donate perishables or non-perishables right at the back door there under the belfry. Please, we ask that you put gifts in for those who need it. We ask that you continue to pray for the, for the sick and the shut-ins and the bereaved. The funeral for brother George Savage will be this Thursday, September 28th at 11 a.m. And our sister Dawn Gordon, who's a former Sunday school teacher, she passed, and we'll tell him more about the funeral arrangements soon. Okay, I just move into the Sunday school focus. I'm going to ask our primary student to come quickly. This is Jasmine Campbell. Go ahead. She is telling us a little bit about Sunday school, and she wrote this poem, and she's going to read it for us. Go ahead. We keep Sunday school. We keep Sunday school every Sunday morning. Okay. We keep Sunday school. Carry a friend too. Carry a friend too. Sisters and brothers too. Sisters and brothers too. Every Sunday morning, carry them with you. Carry an offering with you. Carry an offering with you every Sunday morning. Come to Sunday school. Sunday school is the best place to learn, the best place to learn the Bible and do some coloring. It's always give free juices and snacks. I love Sunday school because Sunday school is a great place to have fun and it's always the nicest place to learn. Thank you, that's Jasmine. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you very much. Now, Sunday school is for everyone. We have special classes in Spanish and for the deaf, and we have a class for every age and everybody. So, see you in Sunday school. We are going to be having now the dedication of babies. We are going to invite the parents. If you are in the back section of the church, kindly come to the front. Those who are at the front, just be seated as we prepare for the dedication of babies. Sister Crawford is coming to share with us this morning. When he cometh, when, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels. and a special good morning to the parents both from the school and who's here today for baby dedication how the topic that we'll be looking at this morning is how about parents involvement in a child's life is essential every parent desires to be an ideal responsible parent to their child 
Being responsible calls for more than just being a parent or paying for the necessities of a child. Ideally, a child should have equivalent access to both of his or her parents. Physically, socially, intellectually, and psychologically, every parent has a distinct role they play in their child's life. One parent cannot fill in both the necessities and the role the other parent can. This is why both parents need to be involved in their child's life, that is, if they are both still alive. According to some psychologists, there are some ways both parents' involvement is beneficial to the child's life. Here are five of them. One, it nurtures a healthy future relationship. Being involved in your child's life cultivates his or her ability to create healthy and meaningful relationships in their adult life. When one parent misses out on a child's upbringing, the child is likely to feel abandoned by the absent parent and their introspection will be affected. By that I mean how they view themselves, and we don't want them viewing themselves negatively, do we? The child will have difficulty with social adjustment, friendship, explicit behavior, problems with such as misconduct and youth crime, mental health problems and wellness problems. Both parents' involvement enables the child to learn from both the parents, which fosters a healthy future relationship. Two, boosts the child's self-esteem. Children begin establishing their self-perception when they comprehend through their parents' eyes. Above anything else, parents' words and action affect their child's self-esteem development. One parent's absence will communicate a lot to them and will form a self-esteem issue in them. Three, instill good habit. A person's nature is first found in their character and the actual moral formation process begins with their family. Parents are the child's first teachers. We, they learn from us first. They are the ones who teach them right from wrong, good and bad, acceptable or non-acceptable acceptable behavior, etc. Children emulate what they learn from their parents. Being there in your child's life helps instill good manners, good characters in them because the child will learn first and from both of their parents. Four, it shows them that your love to them is unconditional. Being in every step of your child's life shows them that you love them regardless. It shows them that regardless of your not being together, they still matter to you and your love for them is undivided. It communicates to them that they can count on you and they can run to you when they need a shoulder to lean on. Five, it helps in their optimal development in education. Parents are big stakeholders in steering the child's academic endeavors. Parents' involvement in their child's education will determine the level of child's optimism, viewpoint, and educational achievement. Have you ever heard the saying, when your child achieves, you achieve? So whatever you invest in them, it's not only they alone gonna feel proud, you are gonna be very proud, and I'm sure we have some real proud parents here today. Actively concerned in their classroom, frequently interacting with their teachers, involved in their school projects, helping with homework, and discussing their academic process with the teachers, show them that their education matters to you. So go to parents' teachers' meeting and get involved. Good parenting needs considerable responsibility, sacrifice, and commitment. As responsible parents, we have to overlook our personal feelings and anticipate our child's best interests, which involves purposeful interaction with both the parents. For their ultimate well-being, both parents should be responsible for the child's life in all aspects. I hope this resonates with you, because these are some very important factors in rearing your children. Have a blessed morning. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Crawford.
And we did not do this this morning because Obistan is here. We do this every time we have dedication of babies, different tips for parents. And we trust and hope that you pick up some pointers that will help you to make your children, grow your children the way God would have them to go. We are going to invite the parents to kindly come forward as we move now in the act of dedication. People were bringing little children to him, to Jesus, to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was much displeased and he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. If God's parents are here, we invite you to come as well too. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God and Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you, mighty God, for every child that is in this house this morning. And we commit everyone into your hand. We, in a very special way, want to bring these young ones that come to be dedicated. Lord, we commit them into your care and we commit them, Lord, into your protection. God, across the world today, there are so many wrongs that are being done to our children. Some are being murdered, abused. Lord, some go hungry. Some, Lord, are left to fend for themselves. But Lord, this morning, we pray for these youngsters that they will never fall into those categories or any of those other categories that we did not mention. But Lord, you will provide for them and you will protect them from harm and from danger. We pray for the parents, mighty God, that their skills will be sharpened and developed that they can be good parents and help to guide and to direct their child. Not only, mighty God, academically, but Lord, spiritually, that they will know you and can say to their ch child, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. Oh God, we lift every curse and every stronghold over these youngsters. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless them and that your hands will be upon them in a mighty way. Into your hands we commit them and commit the parents. Provide for them, Lord, that they can provide for their children and that they will have time to spend with their children. We pray your blessings upon them. We pray, mighty God, for the home that they are from, that, Lord, peace and harmony will reign in these homes. We drive out war and strife. And God, we pray that the place will be, Lord, a place that is conducive to bring up children. In the name of Jesus, we just pray, God, that your will and purpose will be accomplished now. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say, Amen. Praise God. My testimony. Caden Adam Blake, I now dedicate you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I pray the blessings of Almighty God upon you, that Almighty God will bless you, 
enlarge your territory and extend your borders that the hands of God will rest mighty upon you and protect you from the wicked one now and forevermore. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Spencer Caleb Stevens. Stevens, I now dedicate you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray the blessings of Almighty God upon you that He will bless you, enlarge your territory, and extend your borders, that the hands of God will rest mighty upon you and protect you from the wicked one, now and forevermore. Amen. Amelia Latana, Latan, uh, Latania Brown, I now dedicate you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I pray the blessings of Almighty God upon you that He will bless you, enlarge your territory, and extend your borders, that the hand of God will be upon you mighty and protect you from the wicked one now and forevermore. Amen. Can we put our hands together for the parents? You must be wondering, what am I saying to the parents? I'm extending congratulations to them, and I hope that they will bring more babies here to be dedicated. You realize that, brethren, you know, when I came here as a youngster, two pastors, one had to stay at one end and one stay at the other end, to the number of babies. This morning we never have one in the first service. Because parents choose to have one and two, while the Muslim are having ten and eight. So even so, Lord, multiply and be fruitful. God bless you. Put your hands together for the parents. Well, Obistan will be coming up to us now with a speech, a dance, then a speech. Put your hands together as we make them welcome.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Have you heard the news? Have you heard the news? Have you heard the news? Have you heard the news of this and 
Let's put our hands together again for the mobile stand. My brothers and sisters, this morning, our speaker is no stranger to us. He is one of our own. He is a trained teacher by profession. He, is a man he was a manager an insurance salesman, he's a father, a grandfather, he served as elder, advisor to the Sunday school, and he is the chaplain of the Obiston Kinder Prep School. I speak of no other person. I almost said the Reverend, the elder Donald Cruikshank. Put your hands together for him this morning. Elder Cookshan will be coming to us with a word from the Lord. A man who loved the Lord and one who has made himself available to be used by Almighty God. A tremendous sacrifice for him this morning. He was in St. Anne, his father is hospitalized and he has to be close to his father at this time. But he still made the sacrifice of leaving St. Anne to be with us this morning. And I really see that as commitment. We want to remember his father in our prayers and continue to pray for him. At this time, before he comes anyhow, the Overcomers group will minister in song. Then after that, the next voice will be that of Elder Donald Crookshaw. Testing. So that, no matter what them say, I made up my mind, I am a fool for Christ. So that, every day, what I do and say, we give them all the praise. So that, no matter what them say, I made up my mind, I am a fool for Christ. So that, every day, what I do and say, will give them all the praise. Yeah. 
Why do I stop my feet? Why do I scream so loud? You hear me now? I ain't a lunatic. I'm not fanatic. I'm just addicted to the one who saved me. I'm so old. No matter what them say, I made up my mind. I am a fool for Christ. So old. Every day, what I do and say will give him all the praise. So old. No matter what them say, I made up my mind. I am a fool for Christ. So old. Every day, what I do and say will give him all the praise. That sounds like real singing, isn't it? Yeah. And I, oh, I hear that. I hear that. And I hope we listen to the message itself. That we are sold out. Even if we have to turn us fool for Christ, we are sold out. Amen. So happy to be with you today. And it's a matter of commitment that I really have to you and to the church. And thank you very much, Pastor, for the invitation and the opportunity to share. And I want to commend the group, first of all, from Obistan, that dance group. You know, I am, I am very, very glad that all my four children started at Obistan. All four. And they did well. I want to commend also the group from Food for the Poor. Is it Sister Walker? I don't know who you could convince that you are more than 31. But you have 31 years of working life. But I want us to note those two things, um, you know, our commitment to, this, to, the, to the company for 31 years. 
and I think that's why we are here this morning. I'm going to share with us quickly, Pastor reminds me, that we, well, I'm, I'm mindful we have children and we don't intend staying here for too long. But I want to just share with us this morning on a topic that I just termed moving from involvement to commitment to greater success. Amen. Moving from involvement to commitment to greater success. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this morning we can come in together in this fashion. We want to thank you for the privilege for clear weather. Thank you for the liberty of being able to meet in this way. And so even now, Lord, as your people look for a word, may you speak to them. So at this time I ask you may let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The passage was read to us earlier, and I just want from Acts chapter 18, and I just want to look for emphasis from verse 24 through to verse 28. And it reads from the King James Version. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently by the things of the Lord knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, with whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass to Archaea, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. Verse 28, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Brothers and sisters, you would have noticed nowadays that when you go to certain places, and it's like every sector of the society, customer service is one of the poorest that you can find. And it doesn't just happen in school. I was at an institution recently, and I just remember my last experience when I took my father there in June. And when I wanted to ask a question to the lady, she said, no, ask me, sir. No, ask me. Go ask the doctor. And I said, that's exactly where I will go. So I went to the doctor, got my information, and I moved on. I went to a bank with my neighbor recently, and after sitting there with that number, 14, when we got there, they were the call number four, and we sat there for five hours. And while we were there, we got up a few times to speak to persons where in the line we were, and so on. But then somebody came out on one point to say to us, oh, we are having problems with the system and we are asking you to wait and so on. So poor me now get up and said to her, ma'am, can I ask a question? And I said, what, sir? What can... And this was in the bank. And I could go on and on and you could tell me some of the experience you have had. I was in a fast food place recently 
And when I asked after, please, my up, pay the money for my order and waiting on it. I said to the young miss, but this is not fast food because fast food and a, a, a establishment. Because she so, said, so, why you want me to do so? Why you want me to do? You, you, you know, she will start sharp and, and then I'll pay me for this. So, you know, customer service problems, Pastor, can be any, for, for whatever reason. It could be relational, you know, in the institution. It could be financial because they're not getting enough pay to do. And so I am just merely involving in the system. Whatever it is, I remember parents. And as I look at the whole thing of who is coming this morning, Obistan and parents bringing children and, um, you know, food for the poor. We have to remember that, especially institution, those of us who are on the front line, we are the, you give the first impression of the institution. So if you are having problems at home and you are dissatisfied with the money, then they pay you and you not feel that you should come, I think you should really stay home. I was heartened when Mrs. Walker said she is dear for 31 years. But listen to what she said. Every morning she gets up, she is excited to go because she feels like she's going to a family. This sounds to me like not mere involvement. It sounds like the word commitment. And do you know, brothers and sisters, these two words give different impression, give different meaning. And if we should look at them, who, those who are involved simply just do it because you are included as a condition. Oh, I was there. I was at Obistan. I couldn't care less what want to happen. Me know they don't push me out, so what? So I come here tomorrow morning and me just they do my job. The committed person now will be happy to come and they will want to be excited about whatever because I have a job. Same thing happened to people who are at Food for the Poor and whichever institution you work for. We should be committed. Do you know, as I thought about it seriously, those of us who are employed, do you know that there are other persons who have, who have applied and they have interviewed, but they choose you? And we should be grateful. Even if we work for a week or a year, we were blessed to be chosen over the others. So we need to give it, give it our all. And I could go down the line of comparing commitment to involvement and so on. But I want you to just picture two more things about commitment and involvement that I want you to know. And just take the picture they say of the ham and egg. The chicken was just involving laying a egg. But for you to get ham, them have to sacrifice the pig. The level of commitment to the situation. And I want us to look at marriage as well. Because sometimes, you know, we just get into this thing near marriage because of what we can get. And we know prepare for no hard life and no sacrifice and no commitment. There's a friend of mine in the country, even though he's a Christian, he said, he did not say for better for worse. He said until love find fault and so you can understand then is just an edge to see when the fault would come then he is out I want us to note brothers and sisters that involvement means you can be out anytime but when you are committed to something you are dear for the long haul and you know, as I thought of it, we know we're living in a, in, a, in a really very economic, really serious economic environment. 
But you know, if they could come down to a layoff and so on, who you think they will lay off first? Not the people who are simply involved. Then you go have a hard time to lego those who are committed because they are they say their assets hurt. Mrs. Walker mentioned that. They like what them do. Them they, they, their work is thorough. Then come to work on time. They don't take no unnecessary sick leave and whatever. They are here. What do we do with people like these? You think they're just going to let them go like that? We need to be looking at how involved we are and whether or not we are committed. The passage, we, I can highlight quickly, quickly, quickly. Maybe four persons in scripture who was committed to a task and the result. But maybe for this purpose, I just tell you Queen Esther. Here was a sister who was a Jew who went into Persia. And she was no queen in the palace. But there was a threat to the Jews to be killed, to be wiped out. So her cousin Mordecai came to her and said to her, look, the whole of we are threatened. We're going to be annihilated. And don't think that the fact that you are the queen, that you are going to be exempted. And Queen Esther decided to get involved. And she called for a fast with her maidens. And this is what she did. She went into the king to play her case. I want to understand the condition. She was not expected to go into the king except she was invited. But she decided, you know what? This is a matter that I'm committed to. If I don't do it, and I want to tell you the scripture in um, that, 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 that speaks with it. You can look it up in, in, in Esther chapter 4, 13 through 17. But she says in verse 16, chapter 4 and verse 16, And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. The rest was history. The king when she approached the king, invited her in, and then the Jewish people were saved. We could tell you about, about the prophet Daniel, who he was committed to, to praying, and the king ordered nobody should pray to any god or anybody but him. And he was committed to the task to his God. And he continued to pray. They threw him in the lion's den. And in chapter 6, verse 22, and the, king, uh, the New King James Version says, He said, My God has sent his angels and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also our king, I have done no wrong before you. And you can read that. You can read that in Daniel chapter 6. And it will give you all those passages. Our text this morning introduces us to a man named Apollos. And he seemed to be a very, very important man. Now, when we read verse, um, verse 24 of Acts chapter 18, it tells us who this guy was. He was born of Alexandria, and he was eloquent. Man could attack, and the man was mighty in the scriptures. So he was a very learned man. Very qualified guy, and him not make no bones for make him speeches and so on. And I can just imagine the young people possibly who come to who, who food for the poor employing our sister, 
well trained out of university and so on and they came maybe with their masters and so on with a attache case well in my time it was attache and i know what it is now but they will come and you know knowledge just say run through them years and they sit there and you know want to be waited to be told that when they speak man they they just speak and this was the type of man no doubt he came but you know what he did maybe when he come he got a job description and if his supervisor said to him do that he may possibly say oh that's not part of my job description I, I am not part of it but i want you to take note of this guy very very knowledgeable and when he came to ephesus they said this man was instructed in the way of the lord and being fervent in the spirit he spake and taught diligently in the things of the lord I wanted to stop there. He didn't say to me that this guy was told what to do. Apparently, if you read the rest of the scripture, I said Paul was going here and there, strengthening the churches as he moved, and he left Aquila and, uh, and Priscilla in the church of Ephesus. There came this brother, and no doubt as he went there, he saw the opportunity and him just start to work. They had no problems with him. He was taught the way of scriptures. And him just went on and work and work. The scripture says here in verse 25 that the man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit. Sister Walker, the man was like you very happy i want they say he was enthusiastic one interpreter says one what you know one 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 version says so when he present him thing he presented very very well he was willing to do and him just went ahead what can we learn from that obistan workers when you come at work you're not feel look drab and carry on as if to say them have to pull you out of bed and when them ask you, what happened to you? Why? I mean, I didn't feel like. Left that at work, that, that your yard, man. You have come at work. I'm not saying we don't have challenges. But you must be as enthusiastic about what you do. You must be zealous. I'm, I'm talking to us church people. We must be zealous about what we do. We find this example right here in scripture. And if you didn't know, Mrs. Walker came up here and said to us, she's excited every day. She goes to work for 31 years being excited about what she is about. Pastor, it's needless to tell you that people don't know that people are noticing you. Every time you come at work, as when the evaluation time comes, they're going to tell you, say, you always drab and lazy and not come at work. Some of we want the highest mark when evaluation comes. But the truth is, you don't work for it. You don't work for it. So we need to note this from, from Apollos. He was involved. He was involved and very enthusiastic and what he was about i want us to note something else about apollos that even though he was instructed in the word and the things of the lord there was a limitation he has did you notice it in that same verse 25 look at part b he knew only the baptism of john which indicate, and again, Pastor, when I look at and hear that I have to speak to, 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 to workers, I just thought, you know, sometimes we have to accept our limitations. I say, as individuals, we don't know everything. Okay? Here was a brother, even though he was trained and taught in the things of the Lord. He was excited about what he has, but he was limited in knowledge. 
what we discover with him? He knew only John's baptism, which John was baptizing unto repentance to believe on Jesus who was coming after. All of that, Apollos didn't know. He didn't know that. And so there were some people in the church that observe him. I'm coming to that part of it, those of us who observe and have to instruct. But let me just address us as individuals who are in these positions. And I'm speaking too to parents. You come to this morning to dedicate your baby. There is no blueprint as to how to raise children. But you know what? We have to act, admit. We have to go to people sometimes, do the research to say what is best, best practices. Ask people who have gone that route before. We are limited. We have to acknowledge that we don't know it all. Never forget one cousin of mine. Her daughter is very big now. But I remember we went to Chicago years ago and my aunt died and we were there. And she brought a little child. And the poor little girl was so confused with her baby because everybody, they gave little instruction until she gets just mad and said, boy, I don't know what to do. The whole house just don't pan me so. Truth is, she was limited, but everybody just they pushed down their little knowledge upon her and got her a little confused. But she thought she knew it all. She had to be doing it on her own. And then what she was doing was the best she could. So here was a guy who was doing his best, but people saw him and discovered he was limited. The elders who were there saw him, and the Bible said they were Priscilla and Aquila, who Paul left at the church at, uh, at, at Ephesus. And the Bible says in verse 26, right? And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and explained Pounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Take note of that. And I'm going to say two things and I'm going to address two set of people. The elders, they identify the error. They identify the limitation in the brother. You notice what they said? The scripture said, they took him privately and instruct him. They don't make a brawl. They took him privately and they instruct him. So leaders, and those of us who were there before, we know the, the, sometimes these young people come up with them youthful exuberance and they want to flaunt it on us. Sometimes we have to deal with it in the way we know how. We can make a brawl. We have to just try to deal with it in the way we know how. I notice another thing that happened. That maybe the methods that were used by these persons the Bible said that they taught him perfectly. So the corrections that were made were done perfectly. So the methods, maybe the timing, and how it's done, it's going to be very important. I was talking to a lady yesterday about her daughter, who is 34, who has now developed a big hatred for her mother. When she has to refer to her, she refer to her as her father's wife. And I sense there is a serious problem. So I asked the mother yesterday, what happened? What is it that developed, you know, that caused this sort of animosity and this hate? And she went back to some years ago that she said something to the daughter. I think she could have been in high school or somewhere there. 
a word that I wouldn't even express now. And that word, one word, etched in her mind that create a serious rift up to this day at 34. So maybe it could be half of her years or less than half of her years when that was said. I choose to say this, parents and all of us who are here, we have to be careful as to when we are correcting people what we say and how we say so. We have to be careful. I know sometimes we are upset. I know sometimes it causes whatever and you think that we have a way of saying blood that run through me vein to and so on. Some of the things. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful. The second thing I want to note, that's for the elders. But I, I thought, when they said that they taught Apollos perfectly, if Apollos had opposed to what they had said, the scriptures would have recorded it. Yes. You notice that the scripture did not record it. Only to say that they taught him or corrected him perfectly. Yes. Young people, we must be open for, for correction. We don't know it all. So when older people say something to we, we must listen. The irony is, Pastor, and me not pretending as if I don't know. Sometimes it's difficult to find the elders to talk to who would give good instructions. When I was growing up as a young a young person in church. I could find people that we call mothers of Zion. We go sit down and we could talk to. And I never forget as a country boy, when I decided I was going to teach us college, I went to speak with my deacon. And we sat there as, you know, father and son. And he said to me, I have watched you grow. I have seen you developed. I know, I now think you can go and make a difference as you go. Those words meant a lot to me at the time because these were my elders. I know in this time and age it might be difficult to find people to really listen to, but you know, it's important. It's important. So I want us to note that. Aquila on one side and Priscilla were able to instruct in the proper way and the young person was able to accept. How do I know he accepted? Look at verse 27. Look at verse 27 and I will just include verse 28 in that as well. And when he was disposed to pass to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. Now, I can see a changed brother who is developed in a more eloquent way because he took the teaching. We're going to talk about that. Because sometimes, you know, Mrs. Walk, Ms. Walker, sometimes when people left job, you know, is not because of even what was said, you know, them feel say, this, you, this, them. Them so knowledgeable and then so what? They don't want to hear from nobody. But it's a situation where this guy took the teaching and he makes a difference. He was now making a difference. Alright? Um, and not only that, he was able to develop in such a way that when he wanted to go to another place, you know what they did? Write to the brethren. In other words, they give him a recommendation to go. And when he went, they said the one scripture said he was of benefit. If you read the, 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 the new living translation, it says he was of much benefit to the brethren there. So when he went now, Pastor, and I want us to note verse 28 because I, I told you I'm not going to speak for too long. He said, for he mightily convinced the Jews and that, and that 
publicly, he showed from the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Now listen to me now. At first, verse 25 says he was limited in knowledge. He didn't know nothing about Christ. But because of the teaching of Aquila and Priscilla, this man was developed to go out there now and proclaim Christ and was able to convince, convince the Jews that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. What a message. It's a commitment to teaching. It's a commitment to the word. I am just telling you that Aquila, um, Apollos had the choice to move away and to say how oh, then they diss him and then this. But he sat down and he listened. He was a better man at the end of it. Parents, I know you have challenges with some of your children sometimes. Um, but you know what? You are committed to the development of the child. For them to be committed, involved members of society. You can't just take a backward step because they behave in a certain way. You have to seek help and you have to do, do your best because this is what happened. You want them at the end of it to benefit from the instructions you give. Can I say to you, older ones, don't give up. Years of experience teach wisdom and I think you have that. But young people, I want you not to, to come with, your, with, with, with the type of approach that you think you know it all. And at the end of it, all you're doing is just involving. And then you seek the opportunity to move and to move and to move. But I'm sure if they should make a CEO of anybody at Food for the Four, they would possibly look for a 31-year-old service person to get involved like that. May God help us to play our role in being committed to the task at hand, whether it be in Obistan, whether it be in food for the poor, whether it be those of us who bring children, and I'm not going to leave out those of us of Christians who come and sit in church day after day and we don't care less about the souls that is out there. All we come to do is to criticize and we say, well, we just up there, them have them people to do. May we be committed to the task, knowing that the heart of men are dying and the master is calling on us to get involved. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Can we just bow our heads as we reflect on the word that comes to us this morning? The young man was committed, first of all, to Almighty God. He said that he fervently teach the word. Whatever he had, he used it to the glory of Almighty God. He was limited, but he did not allow his limitation to become an endurance. He did what he could. And God sent help and sent enlightenment through Aquila and Priscilla. And what a tremendous servant he came out to be because he was willing to learn. As we bow our heads this morning or this afternoon, it starts with God. That's where it begins. A commitment to Jesus Christ. That's where it begins, brothers and sisters. If we are going to be good parents, if we are going to be good workers, if we are going to be good 
students, it begins with a commitment to Jesus Christ. I wonder if there is someone here today who will say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to be committed to Jesus Christ. I want to give my life to him. I want to serve him from this day and onward. If you are here, could you kindly pray this simple prayer after me? Dear Jesus, I am sorry for the sins that I've committed. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and take control of my life and help me to serve you for the rest of my life. I confess that Jesus is the Son of God who came and died on Calvary's cross for my sin. I receive him now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. If you pray that prayer, I'm going to ask you to kindly stand to your feet. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be embarrassed. You know, everything, all of us were born sinners. One day I stood in this church and praised God. God has helped me to be standing some 30 odd years now. You, he will help you too. Is there anyone like that this morning who prayed a prayer? Just quickly jump up. I want to pray a special prayer for you. Anyone like that? Praise God for you, my sister. Praise God. Praise God for you. Praise God. Is there anyone else? We're not going to be long. We have children and the time is far spent. When do I ask you to kindly just step out of your seat and come forward? Did I breathe a word of prayer with you this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A gracious God and Father, I thank you for these three sisters who have responded to your words and have taken a stand for you. Lord, they may not even know how they are going to make it. But we thank you, Lord, that you did not ask us to make it. You ask us to come to you. And Lord, you say that if we give ourselves to you, you will be with us and you will see us through. So Lord, I commit them into your hand. And Lord, I pray that you will break every stronghold over their life. Every attachment to the wicked enemy we break, we cut it off today in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we pray, mighty God, that the Holy Spirit, who you have sent to be with us, will take a hold of them and never let go, Lord, but will pour himself into them today. And that, Lord, they will grow and love you and serve you for the rest of their life. I pray, mighty God, you will be a friend to them. You will be a guide and a, a compass. The Lord, when it time become difficult and hard, that they will find, Lord, succor in you and grow and be mature. Bless them now, we pray. Lord, we come against the wicked one. And Lord, we cancel his works and his activities and we render them powerless in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Have your way now in their life. And Lord, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you, ladies, and my beautiful little young lady, can you go with the altar workers? They won't be long. They will just have a word with you and you'll come back quickly. Praise God. Praise God. Put your hands together for them. Okay. 
You know, brethren, Food for the Poor survive as a result of donation and gifts. They are a charitable organization. They don't earn money from the government or from anybody. They depend on purse. Am I right, Sister Walker? They still do that. I'm going to ask this morning that we all take out a special offering. You didn't come for it, but you're going to sow into this organization. You may have gone to the bank and see they, they have their little house on the counter of the banks. You may have gone and see it in supermarkets and so on, asking you to drop change in it. I'm going to ask you to kindly take out whatever you can find this morning. As a church, we will make it up and send to them. So where are the ushers? Ushers? Yes, man. We are going to take this special offering for food for the poor. And we are going to make sure that we give something towards it to help. Come quickly, ushers. Come quickly. My wallet is not on me, but I'm going to make sure I give something as well, too. Praise God. Give what you have. Praise the name of Jesus. We are going to be praying for two groups this morning before we go. We are going to be praying for the Food for the Poor organization and we are going to be praying for the Obiston School. I am going to invite at this time Elder Cruikshan to pray for Food for the Poor as they continue the work. Then I'm going to invite Minister Wade to pray for Obistan. So the representatives of Food for the Poor, could you kindly stand? And let us pray for them and pray for the organization, Elder Cookshan, that God will continue to bless them and prosper them and bless the offering that has been gathered for them. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you that we can come to you again on behalf of this institution, Food for the Poor. We thank you, Lord, for its inception, the thought that came and it was brought into being. And after 40 years, Lord, it has grown. We know that it, could, it was much struggle to reach here. But we thank you for the commitment of lives and talent and service that in spite of what has happened, they held on to the hands of God. And so today, Lord, they are stronger than they were. We want to thank you for the many individuals and in this institutions who have benefited. We here have benefited as a church as we move every year into our vacation Bible school. We want to thank you, Lord, for the many persons today who have a shelter over their head because of this institution. We want to thank you for the leadership even at this time, for every worker who has been involved in the work. God, for the hearts you have touched, 
locally and internationally, Lord, to donate things so that the need of the poor will be catered to. We prayed for your continued blessing, Lord, on them as an institution and on the workers. And we pray for it as of today, the representatives that here that represent the group, that each well-founder realize that they are a part of a team. And the chain is as strong as its weakest link. We pray that every man will be committed we thank you for the commitment you have given and even for those who are merely involved will seek to be make committed, Lord, and to be excited about what they do. We pray, Lord, that it starts from you, you Christ, who makes the difference. So we pray for those who are not saved, that they too will know you as Lord and Savior. Continue to bless them, Lord. Continue to let their storehouse be not empty. And that those who benefited will be grateful and thankful to you. We thank you for hearing us again on their behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Cookshan. We are going to invite the Hobistan um, family to stand under the leadership of Brother Lawrence and Sister Pat Hines. We are going to ask you to kindly stand as we bring parents and students. Please stand. We want to come to the school here before the Lord. In a very special way, we want to pray for the principal. The task is not an easy one to manage over two, almost 250 students, a staff of over 26, over 30. It's not an easy job, but God is faithful. And you know, brethren, God is a faithful God. The school started in 1971. And in spite of the challenges and the difficulties, the school continue. The pandemic, we didn't know we make it. But we can't say, but God. But God. Many schools have closed down. But praise God. God has really blessed the school. I want to give God thanks to the staff, the students, the teachers, and the school board. We want to give God thanks. Minister Wait. Father, we come to you, God, because there is no other to come to. There is no other to look to but you. You are God and God all by yourself. You are the same God who when you called Gideon and prophet like Moses, the task, mighty God, that was ahead was so great that they think of themselves as, as being inadequate. But God, you equip them with the necessary skills that they need to carry out the task that was ahead. It is the same anointing, God, that we are asking you for at this moment. The same anointing, God, to rest upon your servant, Sister Patricia Hines and brother lawrence who represent the board we pray for them god at times my god they may feel inadequate or is or as if they cannot do it god if they should ever fa feel that way i pray god that you will strengthen them i pray father that you will minister to them in a special way god they know that they cannot do it of themselves so god they are the depending on you so we pray god your blessing your strength upon them even now we pray your wisdom your knowledge your understanding upon them even now we thank your father that after 52 years you are still faithful
We thank you, God, for those who would have had the vision from back in those days from 1971, God, uh, and the vision is still being carried on. And we pray, God, that the vision will continue in the mighty name uh, of Jesus Christ. So, God, we want to pray for all uh, stakeholders, even now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we want to pray, God, for the teachers. We want to pray, Father, that there will be unity among them that God Almighty, they will uh, be committed, God, uh, to the task in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, God, even now, I pray that you will strengthen, God, uh, every teacher in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, God, when they are weak, you are always strong. Uh, so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, every, ta every, every staff, other staff members, uh, we pray, Father, for divine coverage, even now uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, God cover that entire institution uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember the parents God uh, as they send out their children to school. Uh, we are asking God for divine protection. Uh, we see what is happening in our society but God no weapon that form uh, against our children will prosper and every tongue that rise up will condemn. Uh, we condemn it God everything uh, oh God almighty that uh, they set out to accomplish their goals their dreams uh, we pray God that they will be accomplished uh, and we pray God that this institution uh, will continue to be an institution of excellence uh, as they produce oh God almighty leaders uh, in various uh, aspects of our society so God we place the entire school year uh, we dedicate it to you uh, and we say God have your divine way we thank you for the victory the victory is already won uh, oh God Obistan is going over Obistan is not going under Obistan is more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ uh, amen and amen. We want to express thanks to Elder Cookshank. You may be seated for sharing the word this morning. A word that is thought provoking and one that we must go back over and reflect, read the passage again. We must understand this morning that we are called to be committed. Parents must be committed to their children. Workers must be committed to the institution that you work with. We must be committed to each other. May the word continue to find root in our hearts. Thank you, members from Food for the Poor, for sharing in this service this morning. It was a pleasure hosting you this morning. Thank you, Obistan, for coming. And this must be an annual thing on our calendar. Sister Hines, whether I'm here or I'm not here, we must bring our school to service. And we invite all the teachers to come and students as we commit them to the hands of the Lord. What a wonderful day it has been in the presence of God. Okay. Um, Daniel Panton, something is at the back of the church for you. Please kindly collect it. That's Daniel Panton. Something is at the back of the church for you. Kindly collect it. Let us all stand. We will sing two stanza of the Lord. To God be the glory. What again? Okay. Obistan, and um, there's a cake cutting ceremony by Anderson Hall. Wow. That has to be a big cake to serve for everybody. But it's not everybody can be served. But they are cutting the cake to mark their um, anniversary. Praise God. Elder, could you help me this morning, please? To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done, so lofty the world that he gave us his Son, who lived and his life and atonement for
Almighty God be upon us. May Almighty God bless us, enlarge our territory, and extend our borders. May the hands of God rest mighty upon us and protect us from the wicked one, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. What good? <laughs>